And here, eight people are arrested at the start of climate change protests that threaten direct action and the potential of disrupted power supplies. Their target plans to build a new coal-fired power station at Kings North. Tonight, in an era of spiralling oil and gas prices, who's right in the row over Britain's return to coal? A week of plunging Jonathan Rugman, political policing of the worst kind. That's the accusation here in Britain by protesters at this summer's climate camp in Kent. Accusing police in riot gear of heavy-handedness, they watched at least eight of their number arrested. The camp has been set up to oppose the proposed Kings North coal-fired power station. Amid talk of direct action against the existing power plants nearby, the government has insisted nobody will turn Britain's lights out. Our science correspondent Tom Clark spent the day watching the protesters. A campaigner who broke bail conditions for a previous anti-coal protest is taken away, even though six others got onto the site. Throughout the day, there were tense standoffs between police and protesters and a few arrests. The police say they need to keep emergency access routes to the camp open. Happy-looking campers were arriving throughout the day, only these yellow coats weren't here to welcome them. Everyone and everything searched for any item that could be turned into a weapon. Then campers and journalists alike had to pass the camp cordon, designed to keep the police out. Inside, it's solar-powered where possible, and biomass, that's wood to you and me, is cooking food in the communal kitchens. The camp organised into regional cities, each with its own water supply. Every neighbourhood um, cooks for everybody staying in that neighbourhood. The so proud organisers of Climate Camp say they're disappointed with what they're calling heavy-handed policing, distracting from the real reason they're there. They've been searching us and taking really ridiculous things like the wood for the disabled toilets, um, piping for drinking water, they took a war on terror board game, they took some children's crayons, you know, and they're taking up so much of our time and energy. The camp united under one banner, trying to close down Kings North. We seriously need to do something about climate change. You know, you know the government, the businesses, they're doing absolutely nothing. I'm here particularly for my 13-year-old son, because that's the world he's going to inherit. So I don't want him to turn to me and say, why didn't you do something? Yeah, I'm here basically to support uh, everybody that's here as well. And obviously we're all here to shut down the power station. If this Saturday the climate camp protesters don't succeed in shutting down Kings North, Eon certainly will. Because in a few years' time, they want to knock this one down and replace it with two new, much more efficient coal-fired power stations. They say that will help reduce their emissions to the environment and keep the UK's lights on. So far, the government seems to agree with them. Energy Minister Malcolm Wicks has accused protesters of naivety for blocking a proposal he says Britain needs for a secure energy supply in uncertain times. But it's not just climate campers who are arguing against him. This is not just a fringe issue. Um, 227 MPs signed an early day motion against Kings North. The Royal Society and the ex-government chief scientist, Sir David King, both against the current proposal to Kings North as are almost every environment group in the country, like Friends of the Earth, and the major development groups, like Christian Aid. So this is really broad opposition to a really bad proposal, and Malcolm Wicks needs to say no to it, and no to E.ON. Not everyone is against coal, at least not this seasoned veteran of summer protests against government energy policy. We should be taking all the power stations, all the coal mines, back into public ownership, reopening pits, opening new pits and having a sensible integrated energy policy based on clean coal technology and alternative sources such as wind, wave, tide, geothermal and solar. But with clean coal years away at best, to many a yes to Kings North would jeopardise any future climate change policy. Well, we did ask to speak to someone from E.ON, the company that runs the plant, but we're told no one was available. We're joined now by David Porter, the chief executive of the Association of Electricity Producers, the Umbrella Group. And from Kings North, we're joined by Caroline Lucas, the Green Party MEP for the area, who's about to address the campaigners. Caroline Lucas, are you encouraging them to break the law and try and close down Kings North? 
I'm welcoming them here. I think it's absolutely fantastic that they've come here. They've come from all different parts of the country because they understand, as the government doesn't seem to, that if Kings North goes ahead, then basically we are literally staring climate change in the face. The chances of actually getting off the collision course with climate change will be almost impossible because it's not just this coal-fired power station. Sure, we'll get to that in a second. This can, one goes can, you just ahead, be clear on, more. can you just be clear on the direct action? Do you support it? I support direct action if it's done peacefully. I believe there are times in life, as there were with the suffragettes, for example, where when it's clear that the democratic channels have failed, then it's perfectly legitimate to take peaceful direct action. I wish it hadn't come to this. I wish that the government would listen to common sense, to world scientists, to a huge number of people who are saying basically that we don't need this coal-fired power station. If we do it, okay. we give a signal to the rest of the world David, that the way to deal with climate change is but through coal. David Porter, uh, are you going to be able to defend the plant? I'm sure that the company will make every effort and huge numbers of police have been drafted in to protect the plant and its employees. And I read Caroline's blog today. It was a little bit disingenuous. It, it, it talked about these people having come to Kings North and set up, setting up a camp where they would teach people to bake vegan cakes and learn about renewable energy. In fact, the, the focus of this... Uh, this camp is, is a break-in on the power station, uh, possibly for Saturday, and they have declared that they want to close it down. Normal, everyday protest is fine, and nobody would object to that. But uh, what they're actually proposing is, is irresponsible and possibly even dangerous. Caroline Lucas. Well, it's very fine for David Poor to talk about irresponsibility. The most irresponsible thing you could be doing right now is giving the go-ahead to another coal-fired power station in a country where we don't need it, where we're going to basically then commit ourselves to a high-carbon infrastructure. We are going to then really have a very, very difficult time to meet our emission reduction targets. We're going to be staring climate change in the face. That is the irresponsibility. People here are indeed coming to learn about this alternative energy. They are coming Christian, here for a variety of reasons. This have to meet it. Yes, so may be. Just, just let David get in for a second. Uh, Caroline talked of meeting em emission reduction targets. This plant will have emission reduction targets. If it fails to meet them, it will hit financial penalties. But it will penalties. be a dirty plant, let's make no, no. mistake. This will be a high-emitting coal-fired power this, station, won't it? This will be the cleanest coal-fired yeah. power station we've seen in this country well, for a like long time. Well, that's like on the scale of dirty, it's no. just dirty, not very dirty. No, no, this will be a clean coal-fired plant. Clean. We need it will coal. not be a clean coal-fired power okay, station. Caroline it simply Lucas. will not. I don't think you should be allowed to get away with saying that. It will not, and we don't need it. Uh, David Porter, how can you possibly say this is going to be a clean coal power station? I can say that this will be more efficient than any coal-fired power station we have in the that UK today. That doesn't make it clean. Today. That well, is saying it's, nothing. It's much, much cleaner than uh, anything we've seen before, and it has to work within environmental limits. Caroline Lucas, isn't the problem that in an era of spiralling oil and gas prices, refusing a return to coal could be just irresponsible? Believe me, the irresponsibility here is of someone like David Porter trying to tell us that black is white. The irresponsibility here is not investing massively in energy efficiency. The government's own figures show that we could save 30% of the energy we use in Britain today through energy efficiency measures alone. We should be investing in that. We should be investing in, coal, in, in uh, uh, combined heat and power, decentralised energy systems. If you have these big central coal-fired power stations, you lose vast amounts of the uh, actual energy that you generate through transmission lines, okay. through the uh, cooling stacks. It is incredibly inefficient. David so for Porter. David Porter to simply say it's more efficient and the status quo is simply not enough. We need renewables, okay. we need efficiency, we need combined heat of power. Let, this let me is just, not the right agenda. Let me just get a last question to David Porter. The government hasn't decided on this yet. They could yet say you can't build this coal-fired power station until you've got clean carbon capture and storage technology. If they do that, will any coal-fired power stations be built? Well, if they apply that to any application for a coal-fired power station, then it will be a while before we can prove that that technology will work. But that is probably around the corner, and that is probably what will go on coal-fired power stations and en enable coal to give us the diversity that we need in the UK to keep the lights on. The, the alternative is, is really quite serious. We're going to have to leave it there. David Porter, Caroline Lucas, thanks both very much.